welcome to episode one of Looking at Picture Books. This is a new series I've decided to start exploring some of the wonderful illustration work in picture books today. I was inspired to start it by reading this book, Calder Cotton Company by Morris Sendak, which has so many interesting ideas about picture books in it. I'm going to share a quote from Morris Sendak at the end of each episode, so don't miss that. These are the picture books I'm going to be looking at today and I've also been very lucky to get an interview with Fiona Woodcock who's going to have a chat with me about the process of making her picture books. I'm just going to give you a peep inside, sunny side up. Light and colour absolutely flood through this book. I really like the way the pattern of the bed Echoes sunshine and the little girl's arms are also making the same shape. And what I really like about Fiona's work is her use of pattern. So the little girl in the story is stuck inside because it's raining and she's finding it very frustrating. This is a wonderful little sequence of character studies. So much energy and movement in these drawings. One of the things I particularly like is these textures, like the lovely soft speckles on Dad's jumper. And a sweet little expression on her face there. She's made a cafe for her toys. I really like the spaghetti here as well. The ice cream for pudding. So let's find out a little bit more from Fiona about how she made the book. Okay so thank you very much Fiona for joining me today to talk about your new book Sunny Side Up. Thank you it's a <laughs> pleasure to be here talking to you. It's a very beautiful book and I'm really looking forward to hearing a little bit more about the process behind it. Should we start with the colour palette because that's what sort of strikes you first? Yes, well just to put it in a bit of a context, so the story written by Jackie Davis, um, it is a story about a little girl who has to stay indoors on a rainy day and in fact one of my favourite lines from it which, which was the first prompt for the colour palette, where she says, drips of grey sky covering everything. I knew from the get-go that there would be a lot of grey and a lot of dribbles to show the weather and can also convey her mood. So I knew there was going to be the grey. And then I also knew that there'd be the yellow, partly inspired by a beautiful contrast to the grey, but also because of the sunny side up eggs. Of course, which, yeah. Which feature? Should yeah. I quickly show the um, under the jacket? Yes, <laughs> oh, no, definitely. <laughs> you very sweetly said you bought it on the strength of the fact. I did, I did. <laughs> so yes, the, I was just saying this is done by Green Willow Books, who just have very high production values and they're always up for for sort of having wonderful. a nice fun surprise under the jacket. We're giving away the secret of it for people who are buying it, but some people just don't look. I suddenly remembered actually, Fiona, once you told me about the cement works. With the, uh, yeah. <laughs> that you really wanted I did, to I make... don't know if I told you, I had to go sketching there. Did you? Because that was grey gray and yellow palette. I'm just wondering if that cement works has sneaked its way well, somehow. Well, it wasn't as grey there as you'd imagine. It had sort of quite sort of uh, rusty red buildings I'll show you the sketches one day it was yeah. a very exciting day last year when it was just the sort of time where we had that little window of being able to do a few little yeah. adventures yeah. it was one of my yeah. adventure days going to, so you're going to do a cement work <laughs> <laughs> one day <laughs> but yes yeah, so the colour palette the other thing to say about that was that I got prompted by Jackie's lovely text she goes into quite a lot of detail about the food and drink and it opens up with purple lips and happiness from the grape juice and tomato soup so this is how I got the colour palette together and that really really helped me it all started to sort of click I started to feel like I understood what the book was going to be and I used those colours also there was sort of like uh, cinnamon uh, warm cinnamon milk these sort of 
things that ev evoke kind of a cozy feeling of being inside that nice because you want to go out and play but there's so many lovely things you can do inside and I wanted to get that kind of cozy feeling of being inside on a rainy day yes and those pillars helped with that and also pattern as well because I am a big fan of pattern and I used used that to help create create those more playful moments of fun where the little girl's using her imagination and sort of bringing the outside world in when she's building building blocks and the pattern from pillows and cushions kind of yes. grow create like this tree. that's thing. right yeah and then we go back to the sort of gray again where she's she's having another dip another yes. emotional dip. even the even the colorful blocks are a bit desaturated there yeah so do you want to talk a little bit about the character of the girl herself and how you developed her yeah because I was thinking it does the text doesn't say it's a girl I think oh, I truth. think they yeah I think they left it up to me and that's interesting I want to ask Jackie if she had an idea of who it was mm -hmm. um but I think I think I liked the idea that it was a girl with the building blocks I just like I just and also probably that's my often my first instinct to draw female characters but I did submit three different characters Mm -hmm. um I, I've not shared the other two because I might they're lo they were lovely and I might use them for something, <laughs> for something else very sensible <laughs> yeah um, do you think you put I, a little bit of your younger self in probably inevitably I hadn't people always point that out to me I'm sure my other characters seem more me than this one but yes you do think I mean you do you do sort of um I always refer back to my sort of I've got quite good direct access to my inner child, really. You know, that feeling of remembering. Yes, it's so important, isn't it, when you do what we do? Remembering those kind of, those rages. And that was the other thing with the colour palette. We, Jackie and I were laughing about the tomato soup rage. And I used that colour from the tomato soup to convey that kind of anger and frustration. Yeah. But then, like, then the next page, she calms down and she, she has a kind of quiet moment where she eventually does lie down for a little nap and listen to the rain outside and I spent ages on that one I was thinking I did spend a long time just getting the feeling and mood and I, like you say I probably did with that I really I think everyone remembers those moments and that's another thing the mobile it's just another little sort of subtle nod that everything changes everything passes so on the very at the end it's moved around and the sun but yes and also the there's a lovely moment when they do eventually, spoiler alert, <laughs> when, they, when they do eventually go outside and when she's on her swing, a lot of people are really responding to that. It's that, again, when everyone right remembers that, that feeling of complete yeah. freedom of almost Absolutely. flying. I was going through some of my notes and I remember Green Willow, we have to, I always like to mention that it is a, I, was, I did have a lot of help from Paul and Virginia at Green Willow and they were always saying, you know, more I think they suggested that she should be off the ground on that one <laughs> you know like make her even more energetic yes. yeah. yeah yeah I think they were right so what about the actual because I've always been so curious about mm. your actual technique without oh. giving away all your secrets can you tell us a little well, bit about how you get those lovely particularly dad's jumper dad's jumper is that's with um blow pen let's see if I've got one there's different types but this one goes like goes in like that and you and you blow and it does a really just a really crude airbrushing yeah. technique and I use I mean I've, I've didn't I haven't used it a great deal in this but the um Abby Elphinstone's book the snow dragon that I illustrated it was absolutely perfect for that sort of the well that was slightly itself. inspired by murmurations and it yeah the speckles were were great for that so I've sort of exploited it in some books more than others but yes yeah, so there's a little bit of that but for this one I mean, also I use rubber stamps for textures and there's quite a lot of that in the patterns with the sort of diamond shapes and, but something I, oh, I tell you, I'll show you something as well. I made a huge batch of textures at the start. Ooh. Because I knew with the rain and oozy eggs, I just, I kept on writing oozy. I wanted there to be a sort of, <laughs> of dribble, dribbles and sort of organic. I mean, I don't, yes. and I, I did loads of marbling at the start when I was playing around and I, that's, no, that's not in it, but you have to go through these experiments sometimes yes, yeah. to find the sort of visual language. So I did do lots of things like this and I haven't used, even though I've used a lot of watercolour in my creative life, I haven't really used a lot in books, but it just felt like this was a nice time to introduce a little bit of that. And I did lots of 
Oh, that's lovely. Sort of things like this. But um, yeah, so there's some sort of watercolory things that I think I used for the sort of tomato soup rage. Yes. But this was all composited in Photoshop, but everything was created on paper. But I also did some mono printing. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of jelly printing. I think you'd love it, Jane. Ooh, what's jelly oh, printing? Well it's, like, well, it's basically jelly. It's like a gel plate. Yes. That's a sort of floppy gel plate. And you, you sort of roller it up with um, acrylic paint. And then you can do sort of interesting layering. They're quite unusual looking, but these are, I did that with jelly printing. Oh, that's exciting. Um, I mean, and elements, elements of it did end up in the book. You yeah. know, these were sort of things I probably used just in corners of scenes, just trying to get that feeling of mottled light from rain and dribbles and things. So, so, so that's pretty much, yeah. And then of course the pencil, the pencil drawing, basic, Yes, pencil, the pencil, the, pencil the, sketches, the which, which I try to keep really loose because she's such an energetic little bundle of energy. Yes. I'd love her stripy trousers, by the way. Such a great outfit. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I like her outfit. I have to say, and I mean, thinking about it, I probably did have, I did have a top like that, but not yellow mm. when I was little, and I did have striped trousers, but when I was a teenager. <laughs> I hadn't thought of her as being like me. I probably, well, she's, I don't know. I don't feel like she looks like me, but yeah, it's that thing of it's remembering. Spirit of her, it's, yeah. it's, it's what she goes through and the emotions are very real to me. Well, that was really, really interesting. Thank you so much, Fiona. That's my um, pleasure. Milo Imagines the World by Matt de la Pena and illustrated by Christian Robinson is a really beautiful and very moving book. I've rarely seen a picture book that would be so good for teaching children about empathy. It's all about a little boy called Milo going on a journey on the New York subway with his big sister. And we don't know where they're going at the start of the book. The landscape format is really used to the full. So there's lots of these scenes on the train or in the station. The figures are a mixture of collage and paint and the story is all about the people on the train and what Milo imagines about their lives and what he imagines he draws in his little notebook. So every now and then there's a page which is filled with his drawings. You can see his little hand there and the pencil and even the ring binding of the notebook that this beautiful bride has got a very glamorous wedding coming up. And she gets off the train and there's a lot of buskers playing music to her. The book is full of beautiful details like that. And then at the end of the book we find out where they're going. And they're actually going to visit their mother who's in jail. And I don't think I've ever seen a picture book where that happens before. I think it's really important that this book exists for children who are in that position to see someone like themselves and for children that aren't to understand other people's lives. The writing is very beautiful too. It's in this tight tangle of familiar arms that he feels most alive. And he's showing his mum all his drawings. The next one is The Boy Who Loved Everyone, which is written by me and illustrated by Maisie Paradise Shearing. And I wanted to include it just because I love Maisie's work so much and wanted to show it off. This beautiful opening scene is based on the nursery that inspired the story. And Maisie came and sketched in the real nursery. This is the real teacher. And there are so many wonderful little tiny details, the children's shoes coming off, <laughs> the finger up the nose, the wall charts and the things, things hanging from strings and the little ladybird cushions are all so lifelike. And that carries on throughout the book. And Maisie has put so much emotion into it as well. You just really feel for Dimitri, particularly here, 
Well, he's feeling so sad because he's told everyone he loves them and nobody has said it back. And it's easy to focus on Dimitri because he's so warm and you feel so much for him. But just look at what else is going on. This little girl with a box on her head there. Here's the sand tray, the dressing up corner. It's all just like any nursery anywhere in the world. And then I'm just going to show you my very favourite page, which is this one. So this is when he's gone to bed at night and he's feeling sad but his mum reassures him, tucks him up and says she loves him and he's he's her best best boy and the colour in this and the way Maisie has handled the light is really amazing. The wonderful blue and then this golden light pouring through the door, falling over the bedspread and just catching his face and the faces of the toys there. Again, what an astonishing amount of detail Maisie's put into this. Even the dirty washing up in the sink there. The bread on the breadboard, the toys on the table. It's just the everyday chaos of life that any parent would recognise. And here again, the dad feeding breakfast to a baby on the canal boat. And so the story ends as it began with story time, except that this time... Dimitri is absolutely at the heart of everything. And my final choice for this episode is Time for Bed Miyuki, written by Roxanne Marie Galliez and illustrated by Seng Soon Ratanavan. And the artwork in this is stunning. I came across this book in a bookshop, I hadn't heard about it before and as soon as I saw it I had to have it. There's just lovely, lovely use of pattern and colour in this and what I particularly like about it is the way it plays with scale. So there's a gigantic toad in a bucket and there's a tiny flip-flop in the bird's nest. And then we see the little girl, Miyuki, who doesn't want to go to bed. Her grandpa's trying to get her to go to bed, but she's far too busy in her imaginative world. As she is watering vegetables that are far bigger than she is. And here's grandpa leading a parade of snails. And she's walking on stilts that are made of pencils. It's just so imaginative. And then Grandpa finally tucks her up for the night in a giant red shoe. And they're lit by these Lily of the Valley lamps. And then he reads her a story and the story grows out of the book. And there's the toad in the bucket again. Really wonderful, beautiful book. So I'm going to end with a quote from Maurice Sendak. There he is. He was asked in 1977, can you define what a picture book is for you? And he said, it's everything. It's my battleground. It's where I express myself. It's where I consolidate my powers and put them together in what I hope is a legitimate, viable form that is meaningful to somebody else and not just to me. It's where I work. It's where I put down those fantasies that have been with me all my life and where I give them a form that means something. I live inside the picture book. That's where I fight all my battles and where I hope to win my wars. I'll see you soon for another episode.